Welcome to my channel. This is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up. Come to, I said, come to New York City. I said, you corny than a motherfucker. I said, but the world gonna love you. And he drove um, 30 hours to New York City. And when he got there, um, me and my team, we got him a place in um, Harlem to live with Viola Davis, mm-hmm. the actress before she blew up. This is in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And um, by 2002, I made him a millionaire. And boom, the rest is history. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you see me on this you see me on this podcast all the time. I could do this podcast like once a year. Okay. You know, because our chemistry is just so on point. I mean, yeah. I mean, I really like, like he's like y'all, like yeah. corny, real sweet, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I like that. Man, you know, real like that. Sweet. But like he understood what I mean when I said corny. <laughs> it's a compliment. It's definitely a compliment. You no, know, it's definitely a compliment. And what we want is um kids to grow up to be corny. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, that 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 should be something everybody should focus on. My kids are corny, thank God. Because like I told my older son, um, which is an excellent kid, he's in the music business, doing very well for himself. And I said, um, if you if this generation of kids, y'all get in any trouble, a lot of y'all going to prison because the guards ain't gonna allow it because I've gotten away with so much stuff. I've gotten away with so much stuff that y'all going to prison because I got away with everything when I was young. So it's just a blessing to um, even be here, and I appreciate you guys. All right, brother Mario, we we've been recording, so it's on you, brother. No, y'all, 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 uh, I wouldn't say they were trying to kill me. It was, I feel like, I don't even, couldn't even tell you the reason. But okay. long story short, I was minding my business. And um, they just popped out the bushes. By your house? No, it was actually at my Airbnb location. Okay. All so right. It was like, I was just there checking out my Airbnb. Right. Ran my mile <clears throat> on my way home. And so they before, had been watching you. Yeah, they were sitting in their car watching me. Yeah, they was watching. So then, you don't know them. I know I do know. Oh, you do know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and is your is your husband or boyfriend associated with all this mix? Is it- so it's funny because my boyfriend was with me at the time. He right. just so happened because they were watching me. So yeah. he just so happened to have went to the restroom mm-hmm. at that very moment. So right. they caught me in a. This happened within two three minutes. Like, wow. And caught me, but basically my boyfriend did reach out to to the man involved. Yeah. Um and. Nope, no answer. Just not trying to be. Running so, away. how would you handle a situation like that? So, he, if so I was your daughter, what would you? Oh no, baby, you and daughter's business. <laughs> right. You don't understand who I am. A lot of people come up missing. Mm. Yeah, if it was my, if it was my child. Yeah. Mm-mm. You got me thinking a whole nother way. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a, you can bring tears to my eyes. I would, <laughs> but. Let me be um, also transparent to the world. Mm-hmm. See, even though that's how I will feel, at the same time, there's consequences based on the life and who I am. Right, right. And what I mean by that is, um, if something happened, you was my doing something happened, I would have to think about how I would do it instead of jumping out on emotion. Because mm-hmm. emotion can either get you killed mm-hmm. or get you locked up. Or get you sued. Mm-hmm. So you, you, even though it hurts, you got to take a couple of days to figure out how you're going to play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and then once you play it, then that's the way you you move. But it can't. It, now, me, if I have nothing to lose, it go bang bang. Right, right. But when you got something to lose, you gotta you gotta strategically plan so it doesn't come back to you. Meaning, even if you got to wait two years. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm that's crazy you said that because 
I I didn't I wouldn't say I allowed myself to get attacked, you know, I was set up, but yeah. I allowed her to do what she did because I understand that. I understand like I'm I'm after the long term consequences. Yes. Like yes. I'm not concerned about violence or anything like mm-hmm. that. I know that the repercussions and the consequences that they're facing. Yes. So you did, are, you did press charges. Yeah. Every all that is taken care of. Okay. Like, legally. Pressing, you yeah. Know, then all I'm gonna that tell you something. You pressing charges, let it let the court system take its way. Oh, okay. Um, charge it to the game. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm you know, still here. Charge, you know? yeah, charge it to the game and um. And but they do they know where you live though? Uh, not really. Okay, cool. So they don't know where you live. Give me still get security cameras. Start training. Take training lessons for uh, carry a weapon. Yeah, you know, so you yeah. could be licensed. That's the a thing that uh, most people, um, uh, especially black men in America and women, are catching up when. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a gun because you can have right. a gun I mean, legally. Mm-hmm. You can like that's what's so crazy. You can mm-hmm. have a gun legally. Mm-hmm. It's just that everybody's lazy to take the take the fill out the application in Texas. And take, you don't even need a license, and they yeah. train you yeah. how to shoot the gun. So now they teach you about responsibility, mm-hmm. but everybody is just lazy. That's you know, been, I wouldn't say I'm lazy, but it, that's been my struggle. I I grew up in LA, so like yeah. I'm not used this whole y'all carry guns like it's keychains, right, like right. I'm. Not used to that. I've been so hesitant to get a gun because it's just not it's not normal for me. But I I'm new here, so I see like everybody just has it like it's a key yeah. thing. Like it's just so well, normal. It's but you, crazy you're in a whole me. another world now. This world is different, and you're a beautiful girl, so you can get just get attacked just on beauty. Mm-hmm. I agree, and this is mm-hmm. a situation. When, you, when you're beautiful, you have. Um, Everything coming at you. Be- being beautiful is a-, a-, a gift and a curse. I agree. It really is. It's like they either like you or they hate you. Right. There's no in between. Either way. So you got to be got to move by yourself. Move move silently. Hang by yourself. Um, don't have a lot of people rolling with you, and and because even your friends could backstab you. That was once upon a time a friend. Yeah, so, see, see. But everything happens for a reason. I mean, we on here talking about it with TK Kirtland. So yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, yeah. Happen, so. Well, the Lord sent me here to deliver. A message. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's so. The Lord sent me here, so it's cool. Well, so yeah. you what, what you'd have did if that was your girlfriend or your wife? Um, Same thing. She'd have been carrying a gun already because that's the way I move. <laughs> mm. But I don't, you know, I, I I stay single for a reason um, because I'm all over the world. A lot of people, you know, people was like, oh, he going he to die old by himself. You're going to die anyway. You know what I'm saying? Oh, TK, you don't want nobody to wipe your ass when you get ill. I mean, um, that's why you got insurance. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's already set with me. I have um, insurance that if I get sick, I stay in my home. I have people to come take care of me. Um, if I don't have a girlfriend, my son knows to bring um, strippers by every Wednesday. <laughs> I respect you know, that. To, I, think, I think Wednesday, you might need an extra day, though. Yeah, you like, got I Wednesday and rub Friday. my balls with exotic oils. Yeah, Things yeah. of that nature. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm living, yo. Like, this is, you know, people think you really got to be married. Mm. But I, I made it this far. I'm happy. But like I said, when I hear you guys marry, mm. I know you go through your trials and tribulations. Sometimes you don't like the fucking wife, and sometimes the wife don't like <laughs> you. See, I can't deal with that. My life is, I control my life. Life every day, I'm happy mm. every day because one of the things I used to hate when I used to do the story. Now I think about it. So you can have a great day, and your wife come home, she mad. Somebody mess with that work, and it's mm-hmm. like, um, I had a bad fucking day. I'm going to sleep, and you, you was go, y'all was going out. You know, it's like, well, bitch, you can, I'm still I, I had a great day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, but when you're a teen, mm. what she goes through, what he goes through, you yeah. can't do it. When you want to go to Europe with your friends and your girl, like, ah, oh, the fuck, you got to stay here with this kid. Like, dog, my wife tripping. I can't do that. I'm just yeah. That's just me, you know. Should, I'm like, should married couples have joint accounts or should they have separate accounts? They should have separate accounts. Why is that? I tell, yeah. Because I think at the end of the day, you know when the bill's got to be due. Like, if you know, if you're grown and you know you're paying the mortgage, somebody's paying the rent, like, you don't need joint bank accounts. I don't, and, and, and if you're putting in a lot of money, if you're putting in 25000 a month, but your woman's only putting in 3000 but she's taking out 9000 a month. Like, to me, that I don't know what school y'all went to. That ain't mad. <laughs> yeah, that ain't yeah, good no, math to me. Yeah. You know? But when you're in love, which is a dangerous motherfucking yeah. thing, when you're in love, you do crazy things. And 
Are you scared of love? Is yeah, love is for the just move the way you move? No, 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 no. I'm scared of love. I, I oh. take care of a lot of people. I ain't scared of love. I love all the time. There's different types of love, though. <laughs> right, you know, yeah. Mother love, yeah. daughter love. Yeah, I love my, I love my children. Um, even when I date, I love them. My female friends still love me to this day. I've changed a lot of women's lives. Um, and I, I, I have no regrets. So you use an analogy where you talk about um, a relationship is like a Rubik's Cube. Yes. And um, you mentioned like trying to solve that. Is it uh, solving that for multiple people? Like you can have multiple relationships. Yes. Or should you focus on solving that well, with one person? Yeah, with one person. Because okay. a Rubik's Cube is, is everything in order, Yeah, so to speak, right? Because when you do a Rubik's Cube... You're trying to get all the colors. Well, relationships is pretty much the same way because even as you go through the, your journey, you're still trying to get things to match down. Some people grow and outgrow each other, mm-hmm. and that's life. And one, and I could tell you this though: even though I'm not afraid of love, I'm afraid of evolving. Like I know I I evolve a lot. So imagine you all you guys in love. I'm gonna put you. <clears throat> Your heart and sweat into this relationship. Yeah. And Twenty said, years well, later, wait. somebody was wake up on the other side of it. Like, I don't want to fucking be with you no more. Yes, <laughs> that who it did. Women leave men more than men leave women. Yes, mm-hmm. but just know that who it is. Yeah, imagine that you put your gut. Yeah, into that situation, that person changed their mind on your ass. Not me, nigga. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. But but if you use the Rubik Rubik's cube analogy. There's a pattern to relationships also because a Rubik's Cube can always be solved. The thing, what I would say to make a great relationship is one, sapiosexual, being intelligent, how to talk to your woman mentally, right? Two, you got to have activities. Mm. You got to be, somebody got to play baseball, somebody got to be a coach, somebody got to be a basketball player, Mm. uh, somebody got to be into bowling because if you have these things, it helps the relationship. But if you just come home every day, and work and just sit there and you run out of things to do. You run out of things to talk about. Because most of you young guys, y'all have sex a lot and you fuck your ways out of a relationship. And then once sex is dead, you know, he's like, mm-hmm. damn, ain't nothing, ain't nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know? once you nut, it's a different ball game, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, once you nut, yeah. your mindset is yep. different. Once a woman comes, mindset is different. And God forbid, oh, you got a woman that knows what good dick is. And you ain't delivering. God forbid you got a woman that just gorgeous, but her pussy is whack. And then you have to deal with these type of things. Go, for life. Wow. Mm-hmm. For life. Yeah. Because it can happen. So, I, I wish y'all the best. Until you next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, good, good sex is a requirement for you. If I know you say you would never get good married. Good sex is definitely a, a requirement for me. A you make or be, break. Yeah, you got to be a squirter. You got to be... Nope, doesn't matter. That's what I mean by Rubik's Cube, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything... Has to be in check. Now you don't have. You, do you have to be financially successful? Yep, a little bit. You got to have a little something, because I don't want. I've been through stages in my life. I've been the nigga that take care of a woman that was struggling, buy your car, take care of your kids, buy your house. I've done that. Mm-hmm. I've been the the side nigga to the side nigga. You know, I've done that. That's probably the best role, though, actually. Which one? The side uh, nigga to the side nigga is like the best. It depends. It depends. <laughs> it depends. When you're young, um, you know, I've had guys roll up on me. They're like, yo, you fuck with my girl. And I have to sit them down. I had guys call me yeah. about me um, kicking with their girl. One dude called me from Charlotte. No, God, this was years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And he was like, yo, dog, you know, you fucking my girl. And I, <laughs> and I, but let me tell you the game I dropped on the nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See, because it is. So I said, yo, calm the fuck down for a minute. I ain't <laughs> I so said, you like mad because I'm fucking your girl, but nigga, you fucking everybody in the city. Now, I didn't notice. I was just throwing it out there. <laughs> I didn't know he was doing this. I just said this. I said, yo, you fucking everybody in the city. And I calmed him down. And by the time I got done with the conversation, that nigga said, can you please not tell her I called you? Because he thought I was going to call her. <laughs> and tell on him <laughs> but the, the nigga was like yo can you please don't tell her I said yo it's cool dog I said but calm the fuck down like it's good you know because most men are cheat and then they find that the girl cheating and they mm, want to they got a problem yeah they man. got a problem yeah. that's being a hypocrite mm, you, you yeah. gotta know all you 
when you put your dick in another woman and then your woman, you find that your girl cheated, you got to take it on the chin. And you really, you said it down to my baby. Can we have a truce? I didn't know that shit hurt like that. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think you can't apologize after the fact, though. Well, I, I think, believe that once you cheat, it's over. That's oh, yeah, yeah. You can't like at that point. Yeah. You just have you, to. You have someone who stayed because of financial situations yeah, yeah. and guys who think they ain't got nowhere else to go. But it's never the same. Mm-hmm. I've seen women growing up used to be in pictures with niggas that um, that cheated on them, and they had this ghost look in their eyes, <laughs> like they like they're empty they're because drained. they sold they sold yeah. because the goose had money. But they had to stay in the relationship because they didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. So they had to stay in as a that's a horrible feeling for a woman, yo. Yeah, I and I preach this all the time. I support women to be their own bosses because yeah. you need to have your own financially, especially if you're in a relationship, because if not, you could be stuck with an abusive you man. It don't matter how much money he Here's has. Here's a story. I saw about the news one day. A woman was suing her husband. She was suing him because she said he took care of her. She didn't, he took care of all the bills, took everything. She didn't know how to write the checks. She didn't know how to pay nothing because he took everything. Mm. And he left her. Mm -hmm. She was homeless. And she was on the news. And obviously he didn't care about her. So we we want, women want, uh, independence and want to look for a man Mm -hmm. to take care of them. But this is, this is, um, a, 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 a situation that can come back and bite you in the ass because if he mm-hmm. dies or um, he runs out of money and you don't know how to get money, you stuck. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people in shelters that was in situations like that mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. I always tell people, you don't want to get old and be broke on, by no circumstances. Because yeah. they don't, old people don't get respected. No. They don't. They don't. Oh, they don't. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Now, go ahead, Mark. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 you straight. You good. I got one, like, shit. Should there be any circumstance where a man can move in with a woman or under no circumstance? Well, it is good reasons to move in. If you're broke and you're struggling and your credit ain't good, but your girl love you and she got a spot, yeah, you can move in. I tell people now at my stage of my life, don't do it because it's a bad thing. I never told nobody the story. Um, when I met my daughter's mother, I had she was buying a house. You know, I had money. And so I started paying the mortgage mm-hmm. on the house. Um, after three or four years I, really after two weeks I didn't really want to be in a relationship but I stayed in a relationship now what happened in my life at that time my mother had just died and I had a younger brother who was dying at that time so a lot of people go through things when they when people pass you either eat a lot you lose a lot of weight I had a lot of money so I spent a lot of money in this relationship because mm. I was in pain so the spending the money was covering the pain that I was going through Fast forward, my daughter, I was cheating a little bit, and she started cheating. And then one day, because I bought her a new car every year, and one day I'm coming back from um, Atlanta, and when I get to um, Los Angeles, me and her are on the um, 15th freeway at the same time. So I believe, believe it, I was on the phone with 50 Cent and... Um, um, uh, a talent agency, William Mars. And I'm looking in the rearview mirror and I see how shiny this Cadillac is. I said, damn, that motherfucker shining. But it's making me think about the car I just bought my daughter's mom, not knowing what, um, what's about to happen. Less than three seconds, the car pulls up beside me. It's her and the nigga in the vehicle. Now, she could easily roll down the window and cool up. Oh, yeah, this is my um, brother's friend. We going to look at houses, but long story short, he was, he was kicking it, whatever. So when we was at the house together and I was paying all the mortgage, when we was having our problems, she took out a second mortgage on how she took out the equity. Okay. Ooh, okay. The equity was mine in actuality because I paid the mortgage for five years. That's my, that's my money. Yeah. And my name wasn't on the lease. I mean, on the on the yeah. thing. Yeah. This is what she said to me. She said, you was a renter. Damn. Ooh. So you had bought a vehicle. Yeah. I was you, was paying I was taking, the, you was taking yeah. care of her. I was taking care of her. And, and you got hustled pretty much out of it. Well, I didn't get hustled out of it. We had our problems. So okay. when, when things hit the fan, you want things that you think Correct. belong to you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't mind if we split it. We didn't split it. She said, I don't owe you shit. Oh. You was a oh. renter. Oh. 
Mm. And see, you you know, I, I listened to, you know, you almost 350 episodes in on your podcast. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. You know, very successful. And you give a lot of game to, to young men um, around setting up their life in a way where maybe something like that didn't happen. Yes. So yes. do you use that as like experience? Like yeah, to tell well, everything us? Everything I talk about is because yeah. I've gone through it. Okay. Mm. See, is everything I say, I've gone through what I'm telling you. Yeah. And that's what I want people to understand. I'm not saying this stuff because um, it's just coming to the top of my head. I heard somebody else speak about it. No doubt. And I'm using their momentum. What most people that I see in interviews, they're just talking about something that um, they probably read somewhere or they th- know somebody went through experience. I have actually lived it. Yeah. I've actually gone through the the treaches of this shit, mm-hmm. of life. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then you got to know your purpose. So as you get older and you get connected to the universe, you understand who you are and say, I know my purpose in life. And when you know your purpose in life, you have advantage on everybody. So I have an advantage on everybody pretty much in the world because yeah. I know my purpose. So with that said, I, I I teach and I do it through stand-up. I do it through my podcast. Um, and, 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 and it's good to see you young, you young people and people in, around the world, Australia, London. I can't even walk down the street. Like, it's amazing what um, these type of shows have done for me, and it's a real blessing. No doubt. I got a question. It's from my boy Hugo. He said, um, was there any business opportunities you could invest in, like like Kevin Hart could have invested in Uber, like, that he regret that you regret that you didn't invest in that blew up. No, no, I I, I haven't had those type of deals. But things come to me um, uh, spiritually and universally again. Like I got a deal with Snapchat that's really unique on the market right now. Signed another deal. They flew in to see me in Miami um, with a streaming company that's to be real big. I'm about to do the Who Raised You um, podcast because they want to do celebrities. Okay. And I wanted to keep it street like my show. Yeah. And um, they didn't want to do that. So I got, I'm on, I want to keep my show because that's for the, the average person walking the street and those young mm. men and women need me for that podcast. Without I don't, question. I don't want to leave that. Mm. So I'm going to do this. So my special, my new show, we're going to do it in three months. It's called Who Raised You? About to be a big press release on it. But this one now is going to be like how you guys are doing. This is, mm. you're going to see me on, um, um, on the podcast. It won't be like I'm on the phone. Yeah. This one over here, you'll see No video, video on your current Yeah, one. No, no video. Now, now, why no video? Because there's some of the game that you give like around... You know, you should have this in the bank before you get married. Right. Or you should operate this. So why no video, though? It was no video because, you know, Charlamagne, executive producer yeah. of my show. Mm. And um, I'm never in one place. Like, Correct. you have to be in one place to do this. And I can't, man, I'm in a different mm. city yeah, yeah. every other day. And that's another reason why I didn't really want to be in a relationship. Because it's not fair to the young lady. Yeah. Mm. It's not fair if you had kids and everybody's in the house and you're gone. All the time. And and there's no comic on this planet. There's more comics that probably make more money than me. Mm. But ain't no comic on this planet that works more than me. Okay. You know, it's 365 days in a year. I think I work 340. (sighs) Yeah. I've only spent Thanksgiving with my children one time in 38 years. Do you regret any of that? No, hell motherfucker, no. I ain't never met a dollar I ain't like. <laughs> I'm stacking this shit to the ceiling. Now, people say, you can't take it with you yet, but you can leave it for someone. Straight up. So that's how I am. Uh, you straight can leave up. it, though. Straight up, straight up. Do you invest in stocks or, or yeah, real estate? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't invest um, aggressively, as they say. But I'm in everything from Tesla to gasoline to Target to Starbucks. I have money in everything. But the true investment I invest in is me. Mm-hmm. I, I I put my money in me um, to stay healthy, to work out, take care of my skin, go to the doctor, dentist, blood work, um, um, screenings, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And one thing I truly don't believe in what the world has taught most of the world is that I don't believe you should work hard and then some financial company knows that you have a lot of money and they manage your money for you, but they take 3% mm. of your money. Dang, I feel bad because yeah. that's what I do for a living. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, 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 some people can do that. No disrespect, I can't. I get calls all the time. Mr. Kerry Clinton. And I'm saying, so you mean to tell me that all this money I worked hard for, I'm going to hand it over to you for you to think what you think is best for me Correct. to invest in. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. No, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Some people need 
the handheld. But I tell people, if you want to invest in um, just find they got, they got things that's so simple now. They got stash. They have all these type of things that you can invest in, and just the easy way to invest. And I'm gonna share this with the world. Put money into stuff that you do every day. Mm. Ooh. What you do every day, that's it. And you don't have to put in thousands and thousands of dollars. Even if it's only $50, $75 a month, mm-hmm. eventually it's going to grow. And that's it. And just leave it there and have it in a, a revolving auto, auto pay that that money comes out every month out of your account to go towards your stocks. I, I started out with $500 and I'm over $350. In investments in stock, and I haven't even touched it with five hundred dollars, and it's over there. Because, but I'm investing a lot of different things. The things I want to get in, in, invest into now is the electric um, stations, mm-hmm. because in the next fifty years, mm-hmm. that shit's going to be huge, and people need to hop on that because that's the next move. And anything in automation, anything in um, AI, that's the thing that you want to get. Even when you kids, are, you know, sending your kids to college, get get kids into um, going to school, getting trades, and know how to work in artificial intelligence because they're going to need people to run that and know what they're doing. The old school going to college, the old school of um, working for people, because uh, if you read a lot, they already predicted it. 30 million people are going to be out of work by the year 2030. Mm-hmm. 30 million. That's crazy. And the robots, they, I, I was thinking the other day, the government should really come up with a program you could buy your own robot to work in a factory or do something, and that that's your employer. That's your employee, that's, and that you person works game. for you. Yeah, yeah. You give him some real game. Yeah. Right. That, 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 your robot <laughs> is your employee because who are you going to tax? Because with AI now, there's no taxes. How are you going to get taxes to go into the into the country? But if, if they a company builds robots for the average person, and that person goes to work. That for robot the robot. goes to work for you. Yeah. That robot, so you're... That sounds good um, to me. Your um, <laughs> responsibility is you got to keep up the maintenance of your robot. Exactly. Your responsibility is to make sure everything's done with your robot. And now when your robot is sick, you get things taken care of. So you're because if your robot don't go to work, you can't make no money. <laughs> Man, so my robot sick. better not get sick. Yeah, like, yeah, I, you, you need Which some is your yeah. happen with your robot. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. But you're responsible for that robot to be to work on time, mm-hmm. etc. So you're in the morning, you doing what the, you got to do and send that motherfucker out to get your check. <laughs> Sound like pimping. Yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's a small thing, you know? It's, it's, it, I just think that's the way you should do it. And everybody eats. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Everybody eats. Because the reason why they created um, automation because people didn't want to work. Mm, yeah. And then when the mm-hmm. pandemic happened, people got lazy. So all these stores was laying off people. And then when as they started hiring back, mm-hmm. it was the worst people in the world to work because you're used to a certain type of um, chemistry, a certain type of um, nuance in a, mm-hmm. in, at a restaurant or Ruth Chris or Morton Steakhouse or the St. Regis Hotel or the Ritz Carlton and those same people are not there or they don't know the business and it, it's, it's a horrible feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. So let's let's talk about maybe some of your philosophy around women. Yes. So you say that a man should be like a concierge to a woman. Yes. And I appreciate it, brother. I've been using the warm towel for about yeah. 15 years. Yes, yes, you yes, done, yes, yes. You don't put a young brother on some game. Right, right, so you, right. I appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. If you don't know the warm towel, I'll let him give you the game. I ain't got to do nothing. Okay. Nah, See, you, 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 it ain't that you ain't got to. Yeah. It's game. See, when I you hear know? a young man talk, you, how old are you? I mean, I'm 40. Yeah, you ain't got no game. <laughs> Like uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we yeah. might have to put him on some game today. Yeah, so you know. a lot of you young guys think just because mm-hmm. you, you have a penis, you, you that's the move. But it's deeper than that. You know, you got to know how to um, 
uh, talk to a woman mentally. You got to know how to ca- uh, caress her breast. And then when you do have sex, you go get a hot towel. You wipe her, her coochie down. Um, have a lift Ooh. her legs. And you get to crack her ass. You get the whole thing. <laughs> and the towel warmer thing is you have a, a towel warmer, not hot water. Side of the bed. Yeah, you have a towel. He's been listening. So you got one on the side of your bed. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah. I am a um, disciple. Yeah, you okay. have. You have okay. a, he's a great okay. student. Ooh. You have a, um, <laughs> you have a towel warmer on your bed. And then you, I'm talking to some player shit now. I'm listening. It really is. Hot, from the hot towel to the warm towel warmer, you put the towel between her legs after you and gave her a PDD. You know what a PDD is? That sounds like a, a song. A no, song. it's called proper, proper dick down. Tag. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So after a proper dick down, and then you put a woman in a fetal position and you put the blanket over, kiss on her forehead. I'm telling you. She's going to sleep <laughs> until the next day. I think I need a robot for that, man. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> nah, you got to do it. That's the plan. Yeah, think about it. it. You got to do it. I'm having a boy for that. You lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at it. You lazy. Most of you niggas with that. Lazy niggas. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you think it was about them and shit. You know, that's why he's yeah. saying that. And, and, and you people do exist. You know, It's okay to be lazy. It's okay. He's just lazy. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta really be into it. He don't really like women. He think it's really about him. You know, he want the towel, bitch. Put the towel on me. Put my balls up. Put the towel between my legs, bitch. bitch. That's what. You, well, who, the fuck, well, who raised you? So is that where some of that came from? Then the who raised you? Like just giving? No, who raised you came from me dating a girl who was just as, who was super fine. Mm-hmm. and didn't have structure in her mm-hmm. life. And I was saying to her one day, I said, who the, I need to meet your parents. Because I wanted to know who sent you into the world unprepared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's deep to me. Who sent you out here? How, how old was she? I don't remember. It's been a long time. Oh, cool. You know, she probably had to be in her third. This is years ago now. So, um, but that's how I came up with it. Because it was it was women... That's out here. There's so many gorgeous women, even like the sister, but they don't have they life together. Not talking about you. You know, they don't have their <laughs> life together. They have no credit. They have no money. Um, they um parents um stop fucking with them at 18 years old and say, you gotta go there. And what when parents tell kids that you're eight when you're 18, you're on your own, basically they're saying, I'm done with you, but there's no child on this planet unless they come from a wealthy family can manage the way this world has become at 18 years old. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. Sounds anyway. like uh, the woman that attacked me, probably. Me and my wife said that to yeah. me the other day. What do you mean? So she attacked you? What do you mean? Just by the, I'm assuming by the way she was raised, that was my question to her. Like, how can someone be so angry or so unable to regulate themselves in a world to want to harm another individual? Oh, what you do, what you have, young lady, is passion, and that's sweet. Mm-hmm. But the world is dangerous. There's, this is a doggy dog world, and you seem like a sweet girl. And they, this world will eat you up alive with the attitude. So you have to move from this moment on. Understand that um, trust people, but don't trust people. Hmm. Mm. That's how you have to do. Have friends, but they really not your friends. I think that's been my biggest downfall is thinking that other people would do what I would do. My daughter is like that, mm-hmm. and that's good to have that, but it's dangerous. And I mm-hmm. tell my daughter, and I'll get your information, okay. and I'll start sending you things like I send my daughters okay. to, to, to explain to you how this world is. And you, when you're sweet at you and like my daughter, the world will, I swear to God, will eat you up, spit you out. Yes, the fuck they will. They will mm-hmm. eat you up, and you got to be tough and smart, but really just stay out the way. I stay out the way. <laughs> I don't go nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I stay out the way, yo. Like, that's the that's the thing. Go dinner, go to movies, take trips, and anything out this country is a, is a blessing when, you, mm-hmm. when you're when moving, but uh-huh. stay out the way. <laughs> Man, I've, I haven't been out since this, your show was like the only time I went out the like, last couple of months. See, I don't do anything. Good. Yeah, and your wife love you for that. I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) So, so some of our favorite comedians, of course, you have been a part of a journey. Yeah. And I know you've talked about this a lot, not to regurgitate things that you've said on other shows. Okay, I respect that. But 
um, I did want to talk about your style. Yeah. So um, Corey Holcomb is yes. one of our you know favorite comedians, yes. and he attributes the first time hearing someone be real on stage yes. to you. Yes. What gave you that flip? Because most people didn't want to talk the way you was talking. Right, right, right. Like, well, I was always talking that way, but then when Easy E and I was very close, and when we went on the Straight Outta Compton tour, I just really took their blueprint of how they were just raw with NWA, just street reporters. And all I did was just take that philosophy and it just enhanced me even more. But then I had the game yeah. of life and the swag. See, because I used to dress like better than Steve Harvey and all them niggas getting... Like DL and all I'm tell you. <laughs> when I was coming up, I, I'm mink coat, crocodile, but I was it was different. You know, I came up with hustler, street player. Yeah. So all my all my people had money from from James Cole, Frankie B, um, Haitian Jack. Um, we all lived a certain lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. And so when we we had the swag that nobody else had, because we was coming up in the eighties and nineties, so we were smoking the cigars, the Rolls Royces, and all that kind of stuff. And I I used to throw the big parties for Jay Z, and them all got famous, and Puffy, and all got famous at the presidential suites downtown during the All Star Games mm. and all that kind of stuff. We was the first crew to do all that. So um, to see how comics have um, moved along from style and whatever, but to go back to what I was going down a whole nother path, but to answer your question with the Corys and them and how I got my style is because of how I came up. Mm-hmm. Came up being a hustler, we was taught how to treat women. Coming up as a hustler, we bought women cars. Straight we bought up. women, they don't do that no more. So we bought women cars. We made sure they was iced out. Up. We know that was the 80s thing. You know, make sure they had diamonds. And if she was cheating on her husband, we made sure she did it a certain way. If she got caught, oh, 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 oh. now you got to do that. Yeah, when she when she got caught, way. we took care of you. You know, like okay, okay. your nigga caught you. All right, got you. You know what I'm saying? So we we done, we did. <laughs> now that's a real game, though. Yeah. That really is. Yeah, like, see, we, yeah, we really yeah, did, we did that. So all my street dudes always say, "TK Kirkland when they see me, said the mm-hmm. best that ever did it and got away with it." So that's that's my that's my journey. Mm-hmm. So I took that from all my street life. And just brought it to the stage. And if you notice, I don't smile on stage. Mm. I don't giggle. Mm. I ain't goofy. You know, I don't even really like hanging around comedians who are fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, that shit is irritating to me. Like, I'm not, because I tell people all the time, comedy is my side hustle. I'm a businessman. Yeah. I just happen to take comedy. I stumbled into comedy by accident. I took advantage of it because I saw an opportunity and I was good at it. And once I saw I could really get money and not be doing illegal things, um, the rest is history. So when I snatched up DL, when I snatched up Mike Epps, when I snatched up um, Godfrey, Sandra Bullock, Anthony Michael Hall, John yeah. Lucasama, like a lot of people didn't know that my company had all these famous actors and comedians because I was a street hustler and I had two white men who worked with me as well. Um, David Kleeman, Tommy yeah. Chesterow. And um, I had to stay low key because I was going through too much crazy shit in my life. Ooh. And um, it would have messed up our business. But thank God we didn't have social media then. It was, um, when I got in trouble in the, in the 90s, no one knew about it except your, maybe your mother, you, you know, your father. But the stuff you, if they had social media back then, you know, I'll be, um, people would stay away from me because yeah. I was just going through so much. So my team was like, TK, you got to stay low key. Mm-hmm. So when we was doing the management with the Sandra Bullocks and the Mike Epps and all them, I was in on the deals, but I wasn't in the meetings. I everything had to go through me because we was a team. So I just kept it low key and made a lot of money on low. And believe it or not, that money I was making from everybody that was working for us was helping me finance my court cases, you know? <laughs> so, um, and that taught me a lesson. And when I was beating my cases, I said to myself one day, I said, man, you always beating your case, but if you take that same energy yeah. that you use to fight your case and put it into your career, you're going to be something else. So, um, I worked hard, but there was no outlets for me. But I always told my crew, because they said, TK, you need to do this and this. And now nah, just be patient. Mm-hmm. I said, something's coming for us. I said, whoever, the people going to make me famous are kids right now. Straight up. I said in the 90s. I said, I, I didn't know about social media. I didn't know nothing about the internet. 
I just mm-hmm. knew it was going to be the young generation that was going to make me famous. And then, boom, here goes Charlemagne getting the Breakfast Club. Boom, then you got Blad TV. Boom, then you got um, all the data log. You have the TK Kirkwood podcast. You, you guys podcast. All the, then you got Gloria Valdez, um, who's going to mm-hmm. come out with um, Blad. She just dropped a second podcast that I'm on. So all these shows changed my life. So now people get to see the, um, my concept of thinking, which has always been powerful because I've been changing people's lives without people knowing for years. Like, it's, it's, you know, from women to men my whole life. Mm-hmm. So to have a sh- have shows like this now to um, share my way of thinking, which is really unique, is, is, a, is a blessing. As a matter of fact, what is the name of you guys show? The Realist Podcast. The Realist Podcast? Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Now, do you always frown? <laughs> <laughs> you look constipated. I just want to know. Do you always do that? I, I got a question for you. Do you... <laughs> I, I would say that maybe, um, you know, maybe our brother, the leader of the pod, um, you know, we respect you. Right. And I think he wanted to make sure that this worked out well. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he, he might be did. in an environment where it's he a little, did you know. His thing. Yeah, so he when might I be in that. He yeah. went. Yeah. Way and above. Yeah. I'm so I'm so thankful for him because he's he's been that dude. I really I wish him the best. You have you solid. Young. So as he been you know building and growing, I think that you know he want to take this real serious. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. the conversation. <laughs> 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 when I'm with Sean Main and DJ Envy, they so serious with me because the respect level is high. Yeah. And sometimes I really want to have fun. Like, I don't want all, the, all these serious fucking questions. Mm-hmm. But we, but we also don't know it. you, though, too. Right. Yeah. So right, at the right. same time, if you approach someone in a manner where you're more casual, where yeah. we don't know you, That's so true. that could turn you off also. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you, I'll check you. Yeah. yeah. So we, I think maybe the constipation look is brother not <laughs> okay, trying to get like you. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. Like, I don't want to keep looking at you. <laughs> He's like, dude, I'm like, you know what? Is he all right? You know, I'm good. That, 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 that's what I'm good. Okay, that's okay, all right, all right. It's good to know. Yeah. It's a big moment for us. Mm-hmm. Big moment. Do you feel like you get your flowers enough? Like all the stuff you did in Pioneer? Here's how I move through life. I really don't care. Really? Mm-hmm. I've never been that dude. I never care. I think it's good that when I talk about his mentions, yeah. mm-hmm. I never care. Like I, I sometimes I want to go to the top of mountain and, <clears throat> and let people know how successful and wealthy I am. You know, but um because of how I came up, we move a certain way. Mm. We don't. One of my lines is "stay low key, flex occasion." Yeah. Mm. So I stayed low key, and every mm. now and then I flex. You know what I'm saying? So when I was growing up, it was my birthday. Um, if somebody was dating or my kids, we flex. And then after that, I always say you have you got three to four times a year to flex. And then everything else after that, you go back to doing a regular life. So you flexing, you overseas, you got the presidential suite, you got the Rolls Royce, you, you shop and everybody do good. When you get back, that all that shit, like, you know, I got fabulous jewelry and I rock it every now and then. I put that shit back and say, and we go back to the real life, you know. But I'm glad I'm, I'm 63 years old, you know. I, I remember working in warehouses and shit and understanding um, what $2,500 a month was, you know, and they taking out FICA state and local mm-hmm. taxes on your mm-hmm. money. And now I make more in a day than people could probably make in 15 years of their life. You mm-hmm. know? So it's, it's cool. So I'm uh, happy. You like Houston? How Houston been treating you? Yeah, I, I, I came here. How old are you? 37. Yeah, I came to Houston in 1988 with NWA. Mm. You know, so this is your second time coming back. No, I've been coming through for years, oh, but okay. I came. I've been coming here since 1988. Okay, so I've seen Houston grow. I, I rock with Houston for a long time. I don't think there's no place I haven't been on this planet. Almost, you know, especially in America. Would you move to Houston? Believe it or not, I'm looking at Houston and Texas. I mean, Dallas to um, buy my big house because I want like a seven, eight bedroom home. Now that I have grandbabies, mm-hmm. so that's going to be the spot where I'm going to come to two, three times a year. We have the family, my son, his wife. Eventually, he'll be married, and we do the corny thing, like what y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do the corny thing. That's, you know, that's what I'm going to call it, the corny thing. Because to be a grandfather, know I'm about to be a granddad is corny as. Fuck to me. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I'm going to embrace it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, age is a blessing. You know, I'm about to be 43. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, um, age is a blessing. It. But I would say, like, um, you also on your pod, you talk about 
people take care of themselves and things like that. What what advice maybe would you give someone 20 years younger than you to get to, to where you young. are now? Okay. People think you start in your 40s and 50s, and it does okay, but what your body is already set up. Straight up. Mm-hmm. And when you're a kid, whatever you do to yourself as a child comes back later. If you did drugs, depending on your DNA, bad, it's coming back to get mm-hmm. you. If you uh, obese and you didn't eat right and you overdid it and you got um, high blood pressure at a young age and you really don't maintain that shit, it's coming back. You get, it, the universe gives you one time to slip up. Yeah, and you're done. So um, thank God I ran track. Yeah. So I ran track. I was an athlete when I was like, man, 13 years old, football, running track, and then um, got real good at track and field. That's how I got a scholarship out west to um, Cal State. And, um, you know, I ran with some of the best people in the in the world. See, because when I came out in Jersey City, we, it was Carl Lewis, Ronaldo Skeets, Nehemiah, um, Butch Wolford, Guy Williams, um, Lee Brown, myself. Like, I won the Melrose Games at Madison Square Garden. That's you know about track. Yeah. Melrose Games is a huge event. Big deal. And I won that in, um, in 1979. Um, packed house, 30,000, 18,000 people in the building. You went to Northridge also, didn't you? Yeah, I went to Northridge. Yeah. I got my okay. master's at Northridge. Okay. okay. Yeah, and that's where I met a young man named Troy. And Troy is um, was a great young kid at the time. And Troy blew up and got into the music business. So when I got famous, I don't really, I didn't go out too much. And my son was always like, Dad, we should go out. So we went to go see um, Lil Wayne. And me and Lil Wayne is good friends because I started also with Baller Block and with, with Baby and the yeah, Cash so did. And, <laughs> and um, so did. when we um, came into the backstage, you know, the security, all that, me and Lil Wayne's talking, Troy was there. I said, Troy, give my son a job, you know? And because they respected me so much, they exchanged numbers. But my son was had the discipline to stay in touch, stay in touch. And Troy gave him a job. Mm. And my son worked his way up from nothing to be an executive. And he he balling now. You know what I'm saying? Like he when I say balling, balling. So I'm happy for him. So I'm the kind of person I get you in the room, it's up to you who you dance with. No doubt. Mm. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I'll get you in the room. So can we ask a, a funny topic then? Maybe not funny. Okay, let's see. So Carly Russell thought she saw a white baby walking down mm. the street, and she faked her abduction. Yes. I, I, I talked about that a little bit on stage last night. Um, I don't get people no more. <laughs> <laughs> see, but ain't no money behind it. No money. No like, money. what's the purpose of embarrassing you, your family, and potentially go to prison? <sighs> Now, because I have friends who um, <laughs> daughters are missing. Mm-hmm. I have friends who they can never find a child. And the police don't look for them. Yeah. If they don't, they don't, they don't say it's missing. They'll half ass that. But this, they, they went all out for this woman. They did. Yeah, they did. And she was lying, you know, and. When people do crime today, the thing that they don't think about is surveillance cameras, technology. Mm-hmm. They track this woman's down mm-hmm. timeline down to the T. They knew when she wiped the ass. They knew. Delete yeah. your search yeah. history. Delete yeah. your search yeah. history today. Yeah, they, yeah. Look they, that they up. know. They yeah. can go back years and you really think stuff is, is deleted. Mm-hmm. But they can go back and get you. And I just hope that, um, because we all in this room. All the people's going to watch this. We all have that one time you fuck up. Mm. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Straight up. Sometimes it's not. But we all get that moment that you embarrass your family yourself. The the hope here is that hopefully you can dig yourself out. I just got a designated person to delete my search history. Well, I'm not talking about the social media. I'm just talking about life. (laughs) And all life. See, now we have social media, but we all have done something Mm -hmm. to embarrass ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some could be mistaken as rape. Some could be mistaken as, you know, somebody in here is a pedophile. I don't know which one you motherfuckers. (laughs) (laughs) You know, know, so many... (laughs) Some people have dark secrets about themselves and it gets called out and you never thought that person Mm -hmm. was like that. And can you bounce back from those things? And 
So, and then th- some things are not ever forgiven. Yeah. You know, some things are never forgiven. So, Carly is, um, I wish her the best, be- but y'all, y'all in the news a lot. He said, oh, yeah. you got a girl mm-hmm. in Dubai that's stuck that yeah. can't get back. <laughs> y'all at the car <laughs> rental people. Yeah, the car rental. Y'all at the car. Yeah. And I was saying this on stage last night. Yeah. When you, you got to know the rules when you go out this country. Mm. But Americans think that there are rules. They like sure we, do. anytime I've traveled somewhere. They sure do. And if sure. I'm traveling with someone who don't move the right way, I'll never travel with them again. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because you're not about to have me locked up. In Argentina. Yes. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not, it's right. It's like, I prefer the heat of Houston. Don't yeah. don't have me looking crazy. And see, and I like, <clears throat> as old as I've, as I've gotten, I really like the way, I don't think we should be as strict as other countries, but I think we should have tighter rules that other country has mm. because we wouldn't have the chaos, the bums on the street. We wouldn't have the homeless situation mm. the way we would do. People will be more successful so they say free independence but when i look at free independence it's really made people lazy mm. because you really don't have to do nothing you just really chill in mm-hmm. and you milking the the government for what they have to give you in other countries um you got to really bust your ass and even down to the language um we really I, and i said that on stage i always said that so everybody even in this room needs dictatorship a little bit. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to be told what to do. Mm-hmm. And um, when you apply for a job, they teach you how to work the, the, the position that you work for. So one of the things that um, I use as an analogy, I talk about the Williams sisters, who was told what to do and was taught by their father how to play tennis and became the greatest tennis players in the world. Um, Floyd Mayweather, yeah. by his father, was taught how to box since he was a child and became the greatest boxer the world's ever seen. Um, Tiger Woods was taught by his father how to be a great golfer. And he's one of the best ever. Michael Jackson was told what to do and became the greatest performer in music history. I rest my case. Those examples right there I tell you that direction and direction of a father um, and mother, how far you can go if there, that person is 1,000% directing you or it doesn't even have to be your dad it could be a coach it could be a friend but it takes someone to guide you and lead you and not be your child's um, friend but to be um a loving mentor a loving like even with my daughter certain things she wants to do she got a little boyfriend overseas and one day she said dad i want to go over to i think it's istanbul to see such so, a so. And I said, you got your effing mind. <laughs> you know? And, and, and I said, don't let this guy come between our relationship that we have because I love you so much. And I met the dude, you know. And, um, I was staying at the hotel. He came to see me. I was eating my little oatmeal. And he only stayed five minutes. I didn't really need to talk to him because I could read people well. So uh-huh. he came in. I knew he was a nice guy. He kind of reminded me of me, but he was a he little white with some other nationality. And I said, listen, you get my daughter pregnant. Um... I'm letting you know I'm going to kill you and your mother. <laughs> I said, thank you. It was nice meeting you. And I let him go. I didn't want to sit there and talk. I was reading the paper. I was eating my oatmeal. I had stuff to get done. But I told him. I, but me and my daughter are so close, I told my daughter what I said. Because my daughter, you know, she emotional. You know, so I said, yeah, I told him. But he was a nice guy. I liked the kid. Mm-hmm. You know? He had to be nice after right, that. Yeah. Though. yeah, because what happens, most parents, when their daughters get pregnant, they say, oh, I'm about to be a grandfather. Mm-hmm. And they allow that. They allow it to happen. Not knowing that that child and, f- and man are not financially prepared to mm-hmm. raise a damn kid. Mm. So I'm not playing with it. I'm not playing with none, nobody, none, none, none of my children. We ain't having that. So your money got to, I'm rich. My you kid's not rich. Not rich. Mm. So get, you get it right because I don't want you to lose. Mm. That's all. And you got to be tough. And it hurts, <laughs> but you got to be tough. Uh, do, do you want your kids to get married? Yeah, my, I know they all gonna be married. They okay. corny, man. They ain't corny as hell. They gonna, they definitely gonna be married. And I'm gonna love it though. You know, I'm gonna love it. Like I was on Facebook today. Some girl said to um, he's gonna die, old lonely man. I had to hit her back. I said, change your mindset. I said, just because um. Old and I think that way don't mean I'm gonna be old and lonely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that. come on now, they're changing myself. I'm 63. I'm not. I'm, I'm doing my thing. So I, I, sometimes every now and then I engage with the people. 
Yeah, yeah. All right. So Crawford or Spence, you had brought up champions and people who have been led by their fathers. Both of them got their fathers in their light, big fight next Saturday. We know you in the boxing. Crawford or Spence? Well, that's going to be a good one. Now, here's a confusing thing. I woke up this morning thinking the fight was today, but it's really next week. Saturday. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> um, I'm not going to touch that one. Both those guys are good. But if I if I had to bet, if you was betting, I would take the kid from um, Omaha, Nebraska. Mm. You take Crawford. I would take the kid from. Oh, I've never seen him. Never seen him shook. He's always been solid. He's. Uh, I haven't seen the other guy fight that much, mm. but Crawford, the kid from Omaha. Omaha has a um, certain element about it. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I would say if I had to bet, I would go with him. Uh-huh. Yeah, I would, I, I'm going to be at dinner during that time in, in Dallas, so it's going to be a different. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be watching it on my phone. Okay. Where you see yourself in five years? Um, I hope traveling the world, and I hope to be still on this planet. You know, when you're in your 60s, you really take it serious because you're really 60. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's why I get my checkups all the time. I'm healthy. But if I'm not here, God willing, if I'm not here, I just want people to know I I did what I was supposed to do. I did my thing. And um, I'm truly one of the happiest men. And when I leave here, I want everybody to know that I'm really resting. You know, when they say rest in peace, nigga, I'm resting. (laughs) (laughs) Because I've been moving since I was a kid. And my mother, when God bless you, always say, he don't never let let dust get under his feet because I was never, I never stood still. Mm. Do you ever plan on retiring, or are you just going? I thought I wanted to, but I'm going to retire next week for two weeks. That's going to be my vacation. Oh, okay. And after, like, three days, I'm ready to roll again. But oh. I, I'm I'm chilling after the 28th, and then I, but it's a different type of chill. I won't be doing shows, but I got to get my daughter back to school. We got to go see the Grand Canyon, take a trip over there with her, do all that. We'll probably stay there for a couple of days. Then I got to fly up to San Francisco, get her apartment, everything together, and then um, I have a week to myself. So it would definitely be the gym two times a day, right? I got an electric bike and like going through the neighborhood with my cigar, you know, looking rich and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got my little scooter that I ride. So I'm going to ride all that. You know what side of town you're going to move on in Houston or, or you have a Wherever the big houses are. But um, I do research. So it will be where there's no tornadoes. It will be where you don't really get the floods. I, I look at stuff like that because Texas... Um, the East Coast has this thing now. We have problems on the West Coast, got in Vegas, but we really just have heat problems. You know, we don't have hurricanes, we have tornadoes, hasn't been no earthquakes or anything like that. So it, my decision will come down to that. Okay. Yeah, it will come down to that. Any advice for young, just young people in general, what would you give them today? Just any advice to young people out there trying to make it? Uh, hmm. I would say don't get married. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I think to really make it in life, you got to move solo. I think to really move, to really get what you want, you can't have no, nothing to hold you down, nothing to make you not think. Because when you're in love and you got to think about somebody else, it's 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 a handicap. Like it's, it's, you're in love, but it's a handicap. And that's what I would say. Now, there are people who get together in high school they're and be together forever. There are people who get together and they think that's good. That's them. This is just my opinion. And my job is to give you the information. It's up to you how you process it. But you was going to say something. I was going to say, you don't think two people can actually uplift each other? Yeah, but now, now some people need that. Oh, yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. I motivate me. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, people always ask me, like, TK, how do you do it for so long? It's in my DNA. And then, you know, I've, I've had great coaches in my life. And one of my coaches, one of his greatest lines is in 1977. But he's still alive today, too. Uh, his name was Mr. Jones. And he said, TK, anybody can run when they're not tired. Mm. It's can you run when you're tired. And I'm tired, but I'm running, you know? And I've learned so much in this world. And um, like I said, the things that I say, the things I talk about is really for me. Now, everybody else has to decide what I give. 
Like, you know, I really like what he's saying. I can apply that. But that's why we all have different chromosomes. We all have different atoms, right? We all have a, D, a different DNA because it's based on your mother and father, your chemistry and the way you think and who raised you. Now, people sometimes think it's their mother and father who raised you, but it's your neighborhood. It's the people that you come around. It's ex-girlfriends. It's ex-boyfriends. Everybody is putting something in you in this bottle that makes you who you are. Now, I can tell you this. If you hang around three clowns that's not doing nothing, you're going to be the fourth clown. But if you hang around three people who are millionaires and got themselves together, you will be the fourth millionaire. Mm-hmm. Straight up. This mm-hmm. is a fact. Straight up. Any more questions? No, I'm good. good. Oh, this, this has been Yeah, I can give you a few more minutes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm looking. I can give you a few more minutes. I, mean, straight. I ain't got no problem. I mean, at least he stopped frowning at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he was he was, he was frowning there for a little bit though. But but now nah, this has been an honor and a pleasure, of course. Yeah, I appreciate you um, for coming out. Appreciate you Thank coming you out so for real. Much. Yeah, you're welcome so much, guys. All right, let's take this group picture. I'm ready. All right. All right. All right. Welcome to my channel. This is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up.